Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today and for joining me on a Tuesday. Yes, we are inside Spring Watch 2019. 14 video projects coming out to you back to back to back to back for two solid weeks. And this is day two. So I've got this lovely two by two inch, five by five centimeter box, seven inches tall, uh, 17 and a half centimetres tall, absolutely lovely. It's got the Gingham Gala designer series paper and it's got the free So Hoppy Together stamp set and free organdy ribbon. Organdy. <laughs> I keep wanting to call it organdy. It's not, it's organza organdy. Anyway, it's a lovely, lovely box and yeah, I'm going to show you how to make it. So easy. So you need a piece of cardstock that is eight, uh, eight and a quarter by 11 inches, 27 and a half by 21 centimetres. Now, if you are in North America where you work with eight and a half by 11, keep yours at eight and a half inches wide. I will explain in a bit why. Okay, don't worry about writing everything down. Click open the description bar, you'll see a direct link to this project where all of the instructions are written down. You can watch the video and it's got the score lines underneath. So, on the long side, score it at two inches and nine inches, so that is five and twenty-two and a half centimetres. Then turn it round and on the long side, short side, <laughs> fully score it at two, four, six and eight inches. And this is why I say if you're in North America, you can leave yours at eight and a quarter. You're gonna have more space to put your tape or adhesive down. Then you need to come back, sorry, that's five, 10, 15 and 20 centimetres. Then you come back and you score from the one inch mark down to about the seven inch mark here. So not fully, your part scoring so that we can get this shape going on. Um, so that's at two and a half centimetres and you're going down to 17 and a half centimetres. And again, over at five inches, are down to the same length. And in metric, that's two and a half and twelve and a half. So one and five inches, two and a half, twelve and a half centimetres. Okay. I'm going to scoot that over there. Oh, did I deafen anybody? I've just managed to knock my trimmer off. Oops. Anyway, so now what I'm going to do, oh, I didn't score that one completely down, a bit further, I think. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from there to there and there to there and the same from there to there and there to there. And as I said, that's to create this shape here. So I've just turned the end of my take your pick tool so I've got the thinner stylus head. Putting those in. And that one there. Okay, so I'm going to burnish all of the straight lines apart from the part and the diagonal. Ooh, I picked up something grubby on there. So just the full straight lines at this point. Okay, so they're all scored and like I say, we'll leave these for the moment. And first things first, I'm making, obviously this is the top because that's the bottom part. So I'm gonna trim up a little tiny whisper here. And then down at the bottom, I'm cutting away that little rectangle. So that's that bit and then cutting straight up here. separate it all. Okay, so now what we need to do is cut some pieces away. This is obviously going to be the back because you're going to put adhesive there and it's the panel that's going to come over from the back to the front that makes this part here. So it's this one that's closest to your tab. So we need to keep that and get rid of all of the rest of it. So I'm going to turn it round because obviously that's going to make life an awful lot easier and actually turn it over. So this is the one we're keeping next to the thin line. And get rid of the whole lot. And that one there. Okay. 
and that bit as well. So that will leave us that and when you close it up this is sticking around and this is going to come over to there. So let's get our adhesive going. Actually no I need to put my panels on. <laughs> kind of a day but dsb panels this one one and three quarters by six inches and this one one and three quarters by one and three quarters so in metric four and a half by 15 and a quarter and so this is our design series paper i'm just gonna move off the part sheet so it comes as six by six so we've got pineapple punch highland heather grapefruit groves that i'm using lemon lime twist which was my first one and balmy blue and it's six by six now as i said my box is two by two by seven, which is obviously an inch longer, but we're covering over a chunk of it. So when you put your panel on, measure it down towards the bottom. So, I'm sorry, position it down towards the bottom. That's where that's gonna go. So I'm gonna pop that one on first. And I went with a smaller gingham pattern rather than the bigger one. Okay, and then this part, I need to round the corners off, so I've got my detail trio. Oops, I always forget you have to put this one down. And two sides of the little square of paper. Oh, I can't see at all. There's a camera right above my head and I can't see. That's right. So two of the corners. And then this panel will go over the top here. There we go. So now I can start sticking it together. So adhesive down the side. And like I said, if you're working with International A4 like, like I am, this tab will be quite thin. And I have shown this tip before, but if you haven't watched one of my videos, I will share it again. I like to use tear and tape. I like to use tear and tape so I don't have to wait for it to dry. But also on the basis that it's double sided, if it overlaps, you can just bring it round and make it stick on itself. And then folding your two sides, and obviously you know that that's the back, so therefore these are the sides. Fold those in and the back. And And then when you push your sides in, it's going to stop at this point. It's not going to crease or crumple or anything like that. And this will come over nicely. And that's how we're going to keep it closed. Or oh, that's how the front is going to be. So it disguises the fact that the paper isn't quite long enough. And now what I'm going to do is I've got a bow in the middle. So I'm using a paper piercer and I'm eyeballing where the centre is and I need to feel that I'm going through for sure the first layer and into the second and I'm going to get my handheld punch and punch through so that was just a guide hole punch through there and this one and I'm going to feed a ribbon through so I'm going to get my matching ribbon and these with the organdy ribbon, you get five. You get the five colours that match all of the DSP colours, as you can see. So obviously, I'm going to get the grapefruit grove out because you know what? Stamping up colour coordination is brilliant, and I don't have to think about it because it's done for me. And you know what? I'll tell you a funny story while I'm doing this. So I'm folding it in half, and I'm going to tie a knot. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to poke it through first through this bit and then I'm, while I'm tying a knot and fiddling about I'll tell you a funny story so my oldest son Jack is um, uh, trying to get onto an A-level course to study art and he wasn't able to take it as a GCSE because we moved house and they couldn't get him on the course so what the course tutor has said um, is that he needs to submit some papers so, you know essentially a portfolio of work and if it's good enough they'll accept him on the course 
and he's very talented and yes I'm totally biased but he is a talented young man and I'm just going to put this through here he has been using my blends recently and my he likes our thick whisper white and he likes my um, journaling pens and all of the and he loves the chalk markers and so he said to me mum can you buy me some of my own stuff because he's just you know pinched bits here and there I'm just going to hold this close with a couple of clips so I can find the bow and I said yes of course you can and then he was in the office the other day just chatting to me while I was um, doing some work and I said oh can you just put these pieces of cardstock away for me and he said yes of course so I handed them to him and I said oh you know that's lovely lipstick so he goes there and he went wait do the blends match your colours you know match the cardstock and I said yes what did you think and he went I just thought they were really nice names and he's never used our cardstock he's only ever used my blends and so it had never occurred to him and he said I just thought they were nice colours and that Stampin' Up had given them really cool names and that they looked a bit like the colours that you've got on your shelves but he never stopped and looked and taken you know stopped and looked and actually consciously thought I wonder what the name of these colours are I think he just looked and gone yeah mum's got about eight shades of green um, so I just thought that was really funny so I'd pass it on to you all anyway right so that's my box close look at that ribbon it's because there isn't a knot okay so let's get stamping so I put this one on before I'm actually going to put the butterfly on because I like the butterfly and I haven't stamped the butterfly yet so I'm going to put the butterfly and the flies on and you can do anything so I have no idea what size piece of cardstock I want at this stage so what I'm going to do I know that this is two inches wide my piece of paper is one and three quarters, so I want my white panel to be one and a half. So in metric, that's five centimetres. This one's four and a half, so I would want a four piece, four centimetre piece. Let's hope I didn't pull my trimmer. No, I didn't. That's good. I only dropped the cutting mat out. So I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock that measures one and a half inches wide. So four centimetres and I'm going to start by stamping at the bottom and working my way up and deciding how much I need. So I think I'm going to have, I've got blueberry bushel here and I've got grapefruit grove. Let me get out some blocks. Um, So I'm going to put my flies, flies, bees, I don't know, they're cute, on that one. I'm going to put my word on this one, or my words, and my butterfly on a bigger one. So that is a B block, an A block, and a G block. So I'm going to start with the wording at the bottom. You can do anything. I might do that one in blueberry bushel, down at the bottom. And I'm going to have the flies or bees or whatever they are in Grapefruit Grove. And my butterfly in the blueberry bushel again. Which probably should have gone sideways thinking about it. Should we try that again? Oh no, and the doorbell's about to go. <laughs> Pause. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, I think my butterfly needs to go sideways that way around. So let me just do all of that all over again. So you can do anything at the bottom. Lovely, busy, buzzy, fly bee thingies. Up the side and then my butterfly. Sideways. Better. Right. And what I'm going to do now is trim off here which I think is about right so that's ooh it's about two and a, two and three eighths of an inch six centimeters so I knew the width I wanted it to be I didn't know the length but that's how I've done it so now what I'm going to do now is I've got my wink of Stella and I'm just using it to tint the wings of this lovely butterfly and the body I'm going to clean off there and do the same with these sort of little 
fly thingies. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I can't tell you. They've got really big eyes and they're really quite cute actually. And then that can go on the front with some snail. Oh, Ooh, what happened there? Down at the bottom and again because I went with the spacing or went with the sizing I know I can get an equal size all the way around and that is my so hoppy gingham bag. What do you think? So cute. One with a frog and he's got Wink of Stella too and one with a butterfly and bees and things. Anyway thank you ever so much for joining me. Hope to speak to you soon. Bye.